we should be supporting ending restrictions and opening up trade and commercial practices. So it felt like absolutely the right thing to do. And I have to say that I have one particular example where I was very grateful indeed to eBay. I, I, had, I was invited to a wedding, and even these, these days, a couple of years ago, and even in the 21st century, women are still expected to wear hats to a certain kind of wedding. Um, and of course, most women in my sort of position don't possess wedding-style hats. Um, being over here and being in Brussels and being busy, I left this hat search to rather late in the day. Um, and I thought, what am I going to do? eBay. And I found exactly the right hat at a sensible kind of price. Because the other thing is that these kind of wedding style hats can be extremely expensive. But I found one on eBay which matched my outfit, cost a sensible sum of money, and it was posted and arrived the next day. It was a huge success. And it was so much of a success, and I liked the hat so much, I did actually wear it on another occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm extremely pleased to be here. And today is, of course, about the changes that we want to see. And it's about getting lower and fairer prices for, for, for people, for people who want to buy things, and just ensuring fairness. And that's what, to me, this is about. And the current situation just doesn't do that. The current situation means that certain suppliers can charge prices which are far too high. They can overprice their goods, which means that a lot of people don't have access to them. So I see this as a real campaign for getting people goods at the prices that they should be paying for, them, for opening up marketplaces. And I think actually in the current economic circumstances that we're facing, this is a good thing to be doing because I think this will actually boost in its own way um, the economy and economic recovery and particularly the UK economy uh, because that's where I know a lot of you are from and that's where the selling is being done to a large extent. Um, so I think that what you're doing is a great thing to do. I think you've been very brave to launch this now and I think it will benefit people not only in the UK but across the whole of Europe and the whole of the European Union. And it is true to say, I think, that the internet redistributes power to the consumer in ways which I don't think <coughs> 10 years or so ago we have much idea about. The internet has been a fantastic phenomenon in selling and again, to come back to this petition, I think that is demonstrated by the number of people that you've got to sign up to this. Um, so that's why I'm here supporting you. And we ca I'm supporting you because I don't believe we should be allowing the current anti-competitive behaviour to continue. Um, and we need a system devised for the 21st century which actually allows access to people to those kinds of goods which are currently they don't necessarily are they are now not necessarily able to afford and high prices actually do hurt everyone this isn't just about to name a brand I'm not going to name brands but I think I can use Gucci fairly uh, fairly innocuously and, and they will understand that I'm that I'm using them as representative not having a particular go at them it's not just about those kinds of luxury goods it's about the sorts of sorts of things that people do need and it's about consumers all over Europe and we're talking about goods which are quite ordinary normal goods which aren't harmful which which don't need particular regulation I'm we're, we're talking about people buying goods for their children we're talking about things like shoes school bags and baby equipment which I understand is a particular issue in this and people have made representations to me about about items for babies in particular and we're talking about other things for children um, with cycling ski equipment computers um, and clothing of course I mean we're talking about a whole range of most goods but particularly I think what is particularly important to those kind of goods which everybody needs and which there are retailers who do seek to overprice those in shops and that's what we're here to try and stop that, that unfair competition taking place. Um, as happens with legislation in, in this, this place, in the European Union, uh, we, we're faced with a whole lot of terminology 
which, if we're not careful, can turn people off. Um, selective distribution, vertical restraints, <laughs> block exemption. I mean, I spent 10 years struggling with this. Um, but we need to get past that because the message that we're talking about is actually very simple. It's rights, it's fair, it's fairness, and it's rights for consumers to pay fair prices. And that's really, we must not lose sight that that is, is what we're doing. Although we have to battle with the EU and that kind of jargon in order to do that. Um, I've been doing a bit of research on this. And actually, I think I've, I've come up with some figures which I think are quite interesting which demonstrate the value of buying goods online. Re the research that has been done, that I've accessed, actually shows that products are significantly cheaper. New products on online are significantly cheaper, up 17% less than you would pay in the high street. Um, for instance, the average saving on clothes and accessories is 31%. That's third. Likewise for computers it's a similar amount, it's round about a third. And even for books it's 25%. So the internet is really opening up these things um, and allowing people to buy goods at much better prices. Um, I've actually, I know we're going to be hearing from sellers later, but I have actually had telephone conversations with a couple of sellers in the UK, and what they told me was actually very disturbing about the way that leading brands have been operating. Um, I had a conversation with a lady called Ellie, who runs a, a health and beauty shop, and she was... Uh, she was telling me how leading brands in her particular field, uh, they use counterfeits and the fear of counterfeits in, in quite a, uh, and, and in, in a way which they really shouldn't be doing. And, and they, they actually, at one point, one supplier, one brand demanded that a whole lot of her stock be returned to them because they feared it was counterfeit. In fact, it wasn't at all, and she actually lost that completely because of that behaviour. And she's a small company with small, you know, with, with tight margins who couldn't afford the legal advice to sort that out. And I think she's probably quite typical. I mean, I'm sure she's typical of an awful lot of online sellers. Um, and that, those unfair practices really must be stamped out because I think that is really, really out of order. I also had another conversation with a, a man, actually, um, who is called... Um, who, who sells women's shoes and accessories. Um, he's actually a successful online business um, with a turnover of about £200,000 a year, and, and that's a turnover which was significantly up on his turnover the year before. So he's doing very well, but he's actually had problems as well with his suppliers, or certain suppliers who just have refused to supply him goods because he's an online retailer. We will be hearing more of these stories, and I think what we're hearing from sellers is, is, is something which is important and I'm glad we've got people here who can give us these first-hand stories because there is clearly quite a lot of arm twisting and underhand practice going on out there which, we, which, which really should be stopped uh, as quickly as we can do that. Um, of course we do have opponents to what we're seeking to do. Um, opponents actually talk about the retail experience and how people like going to bricks and mortar shops and like talking to shop assistants, all of which is all very well and I don't think we're trying to stop that. But we, what we are saying is that it should be a level playing field and it should be fair. And actually, a lot of people do like the online experience. They like being able to read what other people have thought about the goods and the sellers and they just like to be able to do it in that way. And I think there's an awful lot of people who sell online who find it suits them very well. Um, for instance, women particularly who want to be at home with their families can run their businesses from their home. Um, and also it suits buyers, it suits people like me who are busy because we can, you know, I can do this at my desk at, late at night, I can buy hats for weddings or whatever else I choose to buy. Um, and it's the future, it's the way that retailing is going. So we must put our case forward and eBay is certainly doing that and I'm very pleased to have been invited here to support you and thank you all very much.